Welcome back to Successful Living. Mutual funds, they're the core of most the investments these days. Sure, there's stocks, sure, there's ETFs, but mutual funds tend to dominate, you know, the headline in the news. And so, you know, in general, we've got a bundle of stocks that we're going to say are a certain size, and those become the mutual funds themselves. So when we look at mutual funds, beyond just saying it's a morning star, three star, four star, five star fund, we need to look a little bit deeper. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to pull a Morningstar fact sheet, which you can get online. There's paid for service, there's free service. Obviously, the ones that are paid for, you're going to get more detail. Or you can go to the mutual fund company itself, and they will also have a fact sheet. So let's take a look at the top four uh, factors when choosing a mutual fund. Number one is performance. Obviously, we're going to want to look at what the performance is. You want to look at it not in relation to the stock market itself, but if you have a large cap value, how does it perform versus large cap value? Small cap versus small cap. Uh, asset class, you're going to want to make sure that you understand, is it all large cap, is it all mid cap or small cap? It may say it is, but what you want to look at is how much you know, of the stocks in there, if it's a large cap stock, are all large cap stock companies. Number three, risk reward. Make sure that you're not taking too much risk and not getting enough reward. Make sure those are balanced off. And number four, understand your fees. There's many share classes, and we're going to look at that in just a second. Understand the fees that come into play with that. So what I want to now move to um, is what the fact sheets look like. So it's a little minute in detail, but I think this will be helpful. Uh, so let's take the first uh, slide here, and I've highlighted a few things. Number one is we're looking at performance, and if we go across the screen, in 2019, this specific fund, we'll call it the ABC fund, returned 34%. You would think that blows everything out of the water, but if you go down to the bottom, there's the quartile ranking, and there's, it's ranked in the top 33%. So out of 1,360 funds, this fund was in the top third of all of, let's call it, large cap value funds. Year to date, this fund was up 18%. Again, top third out of 1,295 funds. So what you want to do is make sure you understand that you should be obviously below the top half. Top third is very good. Top 20% is excellent. You always want to compare an apple to an apple, and this is what it shows. On our next slide, we take a look at our risk return. <clears throat> if we look at the top left, this is a great fund. So you look at the risk is at a very low rate, and the return is above average. That is an extremely healthy marriage there. You, will, you don't want to have high risk, low return. So this is a very, very healthy marriage uh, in this sense. And then if we go down to the bottom right here, I really like this one. This is capture ratio. And so there's an upside capture on this fund, which says 111. That means that if, if it's performing at 10% for the average in the category, this fund gets 11.1%. The downside capture is at 73. And what that's saying is if we took all the negative days, let's call it for five years, and the negative was minus 10 average for the category, this only lost 7.3. So we want to be on the upside above 100 and on the downside below 100. And again, very healthy fund that we're looking at here uh, better than a, a star rating. On our last page that we look at is you've got this same exact fund. Sometimes you have to have an advisor, sometimes it has to be in a 401k, but as you can see here, you're getting the same investment and you're talking about a difference sometimes in the first one, an A share is 0.89 and a C share is 1.64. You're talking about almost twice as much internal expense, which comes right off of the rate of return. Again, uh, you need to be looking at a lot of things when it comes to choosing your mutual fund. When we come back, we'll answer a question on inheriting your ex-spouse's IRA. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Successful Living. We have another viewer question. We appreciate all the questions that come in. Uh, I am 55 years old and divorced. I have a quadro, which is a qualified domestic relations order from my husband's 401k. Should I transfer it out of his 401k to an IRA or should I leave it? Uh, that's Eileen from Portsmouth. So Eileen, very important to understand, if you're under the age of 59 and a half, if you leave it in the quadro, you can avoid the 10% penalty and withdraw it before you reach 59 and a half. If you move that to another IRA somewhere else, you lose the ability to do that. If you do leave it there, you still have to pay federal and state taxes and be sure that you make sure that you, you have the right risk and you choose the right funds and the right allocations. So we wanna thank you again for joining us on uh, Successful Living this week. We hope you'll join us every week. We hope to take a look at online at all our clips. Have a great week. Thanks again.